So now we have uh, Dr. Chandramohan to tell us uh, something about diabetic maculopathy. We have a couple of talks more also diabetic maculopathy at the end by Ravi. So uh, yeah, maybe there may be some overlap. In one talk, one talk is uh, been changed. Uh, Little bit overlap will be there, sir. I, I pardon uh, for that. Um, thank you, IAOS and uh, APYS, for giving me the opportunity to speak on this topic on diabetic maculopathy. Diabetic maculopathy, whole ar array of changes that occur in the retina, vitro retina interface, and in the surface of the retina. Intraretinal vascular permeability and vascular occlusion are causes for the intraretinal changes like macular edema, macular heart states, and macular ischemia. Whereas proliferation and shrinkage of fibroglial tissue are the causes for vitroretinal and preretinal changes like thickened posterior hyaloid epiretinal membrane macular attraction and uh, other changes that occur in it. So diabetic maculopathy, uh, once we talk about diabetic and macular involvement, the only thing that comes in your mind is uh, diabetic macular edema. So this talk is mainly to highlight that it is not only diabetic macular edema, there are a whole array of changes that occur in the macular area due to diabetes mellitus. Though diabetic macular edema is the most common uh, uh, cause. I quickly run few slides on diabetic maculopathy since it is the most common uh, uh, maculopathy that we see. Any thickening within 2 d diameter from center of the fovea, basically within the fovea, uh, macula, lutea, or the area centralis yeah. is called diabetic macular edema. Do, do you still follow this uh, thickening of, uh, okay. do you still follow yeah, yes, sir, the previous I am changing slide? That. In the next few slides, I am just uh, going to change what has changed in diabetic macular edema management. That is there in that, sir. Uh, so, uh, people are totally forgetting what was there in diabetic macular edema management before. So I included a few slides in this. So increase in incidence with increase in uh, uh, stage of diabetic retinopathy and also with the duration of diabetic retinopathy, hyperglycemic uh, control, associated factors like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and other conditions. So the gold standard is slit lamp uh, by microscopy. Ancillary tests are angiogram and OCT. So I included this slide because uh, this was the, during the era of uh, focal laser. We used to break our brains to uh, fi find out what is the C CSME, clinically significant macular edema. Area of thickening within 500 microns, the radius from center of the fovea. Area of hard exits with adjoining retinal thickening falling within 500 microns from center of the fovea. Or area of one disc diameter with falling within one disc diameter. So this used to be a big definition and we used to mug up and then we used to uh, categorize this. Why we used to categorize this? Because when you had only focal laser, Doing focal laser used to prevent uh, two-line visual acuity loss in these patients for a period of three years. So to prevent them losing the moderate vision loss, uh, this criteria was uh, very important. But with the advent of newer treatments, now prior to anti of uh, intravitreal injections, the management was CSME. Define macular edema as CSME. If it is CSME, do focal laser wherever possible and do PRP after that. But now with this is this was a classic management of a, a CSME case with focal laser. But now with the advent of newer intravitreal injections, and now the definition has changed. Now we don't break our brain on a, a CSME. Now what we see is whether it is involving the center of the macula or not. If the center of the macula is involved, still focal laser. If the center is not involved, then mo we moved into the pharmacological treatment. So this is center involved macular edema, cystoid macular edema involving the center of the retina. And this is uh, cystoid macular edema with a serious retinal detachment. So if you have something like this, then we have whole array of agent that are injected to treat this. See, all the agents work well, and you can see the flattening of the retina with all the agents that are available. I am not going into details of it. So, in case of diabetic macular edema, now if it is center in non center involved macular edema, focal laser, center involved macular edema, treat with anti VEGF or IVTA or dexamethasone steroid implant. This is the take home message. Next maculopathy is macular hard exudate. Wester report 8 and ETDR report 22 have clearly shown that elevated total and LDL cholesterol is associated with greater severity of hard exudates in the macular area. So this is one of the cases of uh, subfoveal hard exudates with diffuse macular edema. This is another case of severe exudative maculopathy. So Dr. Amod Gupta, Gupta sir and et al. have found that treatment of hyperlipidemia has decreased incidence of macular hard exudates. So what do you do if you have macular hard exudates? If you have a lot of macular hard exudates, do lipid profile. If the lipid profile abnormality is there, then there is no hurry in treating uh, macular edema. Then you, you can treat the abnormal lipid profile with uh, lipid, uh, lipid lowering drugs and then can treat the residual edema. If the normal lipid profile is there, then you can jump in treating with the macular edema with uh, uh, intravitreal injections or adjuvant uh, added with a grid laser. 
So the next maculopathy is macular ischemia. Dr. Shukla and me have published in IJO the fe clinical features of macular ischemia in diabetic macular edema is presence of multiple dot and blot hemorrhages in the macular area, presence of multiple cotton wool spots, pale retinal edema, presence of white vessels, and visual acuity not corresponding to the edema. So this is a case with pale um, retinal edema with white vessel, with abnormal uh, telangiectetic vessels, and the angiogram showing a severe ischemia. So we also uh, re reported the angiographic features in the same article, which says that if the largest linear diameter is more than 1,000 microns, with irregular shaped fovea, no capillary network abutting the um, uh, foveal vascular zone, arterioles ending directly on the FAZ, and uh, n dilated uh, microneurysms, then it is a feature of macular ischemia. What to do if you have macular edema and macular ischemia? So uh, the main thing is if you have macular ischemia, there is a high correlation uh, with nephropathy. So screen for nephropathy. If you have nephropathy, then uh, treat the nephropathy along with addressing. You can treat edema with macular ischemia with anti vegf but not with lasers, which we used to do previously. So all other cases of maculopathy is like, this is thickened posterior hyoid with the irregularity of macula. This is epiretinal membrane causing thickening of the fovea. This is a classic case of cystoid macular edema due to thickened posterior hyoid, which is seen clinically as cystoid macular edema. These are the cases that are uh, caused by fibrovascular, I am sorry. I'm about to finish. So these are the cases that are formed by with fibroglial tissue proliferation. So for all these, the treatment is vitrectomy. For all pre-retinal and vitro-retinal changes, the treatment is vitrectomy. See, this is a classic example of CME, which resolves after vitrectomy. So to summarize, if it is non-centrendol macular edema, focal laser. If it is centrendol macular edema, treat with uh, intravitreal injections. If you see a lot of hard x rays, do lipid profile and treat lipid profile abnormality if it is present. If there is macular ischemia, screen for nephropathy, and if nephropathy is there, take care of the nephropathy. For all other vitro-retinal or pre-retinal maculopathies, vitrectomy is the treatment of choice. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Mishi, uh, What do you do in patients who have uh, dense plaques, hard exudates, but lipid profile is normal? Yeah, that's, then we have to go ahead with treatment of this hard exudate, sir. Uh, with with the, with intravitreal injections, either steroid or uh, anti of multiple anti of injections. So, uh, no, you have to either of them you will choose or one of them. Which Sir, one? my my preferred choice is actually if uh, uh, de depends on the stage of uh, retinopathy. Sir, if I have a severe uh, non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with hard exercise, then I go with anti of Sir, if not, then I use uh, steroid, Sir. The other thing is you describe the treatment algorithm for hard exudates, macular ischemia, and uh, CSME separately. But a lot of these may coexist also. Ah, yes, sir, yes, yeah. sir, yes, sir. So why did you choose to describe them separately? Sir, uh, uh, sir, the, uh, sir, because the point for selecting this topic is. The reason I'm saying Chandrabhan is that DME is a complex pathology. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You have a mixture uh, of all, yeah. all these. So, this, this was directed towards ultimately, ultimately the management approach depends on two, three factors combined. combined what, what is the fundus picture? What is the visual equity? What is the OCT? Whether it's traction or not. And based on these three information provided, we choose a yes, sir. treatment pathology. Huh? No, but uh, when a classic uh, picture is there, the algorithm will be followed. When the mixture, mixture is, is there. there, the experience will help. Yes. Yes. Sir, uh, the, uh, the why I choose this topic is, Diabetic maculopathy was an essay question to me in uh, MS exam, sir. I didn't knew what was diabetic maculopathy at that time. So I enumerated all the causes and then the okay. Thank you.